Hi, I'm John Glynn. Um, what I'm going to do here is just look at the beginnings of where we start putting pictures into Photoshop. We start, for most of us, uh, with pictures direct from our camera, and most of the camera pictures we take will be in a file type called JPEG. Now, to actually see this in your picture here, if you go to the top left-hand corner of the photograph, you'll find code that's been put in by your camera and then there'll be a little three-letter uh, symbol here which will be uh, JPG standing for JPEG and what does that actually mean? Well JPEG is a file type of um, image data it's based on taking large amounts of information from a, a picture uh, photographic so it'll be pixel based which is what our photographs are. And there's lots of information in here, all the shades and the tones and the details uh, of the actual image that we have. But we don't want to keep it at a top quality in our camera because it would take up too much space. Now, how, how much space does a JPEG take up? Well, a JPEG, the whole point of JPEG is it compresses data. So this particular picture in Photoshop is 103 megabytes and I know that by going down to the bottom left hand corner of my photograph and this picture has 103 megabytes down there which is just over a gigabyte of data because it comes from a camera with um, with lots of pixels so the more pixels you have the more uh, file size the bigger the file size will be okay and you've got the option by clicking on the little arrow down here you've got different ways of reading the information that's coming in from your photograph or how you're reading other data within Photoshop. Uh, document size is the one I've got and the reason I've got that is it tells me a couple of things. Uh, one, it relates to the picture quality. The bigger that number is in the bottom left hand side the better the picture quality will be. It is directly related, related to the number of pixels I have. On average three times the size or three times the number of pixels in my camera so a 10 million pixel uh, camera will create a 30 megabyte file size and that will be at the bottom here um, and it will also inform me if I were to store this picture at top quality in my computer it informs me how much actual space it will take up in the hard drive or memory stick or wherever it happens to be okay however if I were to take this picture at this file size on my camera it would take quite a long time to write it and would take up a lot of space on my little memory card in my camera and I wouldn't be able to take as many photographs so the convenience of JPEG at the top left hand corner the JPEG image is that it's a smaller file size and typically uh, significantly smaller so I'm going to go to the actual folder where this picture is stored and here it is and you can see that it comes out as a JPEG picture, it says JPEG, uh, it says <laughs> JPEG there. Um, at the bottom there it says the file size is 9.85 megabytes. So that's how much space it's taking up on my camera memory card or my computer if I store it as a JPEG. But if I were to store this picture at top quality, it will be taking up 103 megabytes and why would we want to store that at top quality well the whole process of a JPEG the whole principle of a JPEG is it um, it it reduces the file sizes and continues to reduce file size every time we come to do something to the picture and save it now just looking at the picture opening it and closing it does not in itself undermine the JPEG. The picture quality will remain the same. But if I were to work on this picture using the tools or going through any of the options at the top here, on the whole, it will undermine the picture quality. And by undermining the picture quality, uh, the file size, the JPEG file size will get smaller and smaller, but it will always open up to 103 megabytes because that's the way the computer will work out the maths okay but because the file size itself will get smaller and smaller the JPEG will become a smaller file instead of being 
9.85 megabytes, it will become 8, and 7, and 6, and so on. It will get smaller and smaller, but will always open up to this big number in the computer. It has The computer has to make up the difference. And by making up the difference, it reduces the picture quality. And so effectively, eventually, our photograph would become complete and utter mush. It will be pixelated and out of focus and have no detail in it, but it will just be a very big, out mushy picture as far as file size is concerned. However, you, one could say, well, can I work as a JPEG? Because what do I do? Well, you could work purely as JPEG by just going and using your uh, layers palette. And you'll notice that in the layers palette in Photoshop, we have a background layer, and that background layer is our photograph. And as long as we do only anything within the layer, so levels, and we create a layer, we could do vibrance, create a layer, then the background layer, as one can see, uh, oh, let's just take that off. As one can see, the background layer is untouched. It's a separate unit to anything we do through the layers palette. So you could leave it as a JPEG and then save this folder or file as a TIFF file or a PSD file later on. However, um, given that we tend to end up doing other things to our picture or may wish to do other things to the picture at a later date, it makes it much easier if we actually don't save this as or leave it rather as a JPEG when we start working on it but convert it to another file type and the file type we tend to convert to or advise people to convert to uh, let's go to file save as would be a TIFF file and it's the bottom option it's in alphabetical order it's a TIFF file tagged image file format and the reason we would do this is because it doesn't compress the data each pixel is effectively given a piece of code and therefore when you're working on your photograph you're not changing a group of pixels as you are within Photoshop you are just changing uh, specific pixels and therefore less likely to be doing any damage to the overall picture quality um, so we would then go and say save this particular picture will go back to the same folder as the original Okay, so it won't be any different. I'll go to save. And when you say save, it will ask you, do you want to compress the data? Well, the whole point of a TIFF file is we don't. Uh, so the idea is, no, we don't. It'll be on none by default. Uh, don't worry about how the pixel order happens to be. It's fine. It's interleaved. And the byte order will depend on your computer. But if you have a Macintosh, it'll probably have that ticked already. Uh, I'm working on a PC. Uh, as it happens, it doesn't make any difference nowadays. They can open in each of those computer systems anyway. But um, I'll just leave it as it is and just say OK. I now have a TIFF file rather than a JPEG. And I know that because at the top here, it's got the same code. However, now it's turned to a TIF file, TIFF. And this now will be stored at top quality. So if I go to my folder again, I now have three pictures of the same item. Here they are, 479, 479, and 479. The first one is a JPEG, 985 megabytes. The second one is actually a raw file, which I'll come to in another uh, lesson. And here's the TIFF file, it's the third one, and you can see that it's 103 megabytes. Okay, so significantly bigger. It keeps it at far better quality to work on, and that's the one we would work on. The JPEG we would leave. The fact is, is that it's always there if things do go wrong. You can always start again effectively. So you're not working on the original. Okay. So in this case, we would start work on a TIFF file, uh, make our changes, and, and then continue working from there. Okay. So I'll just quickly go over that again. You're going to have a JPEG picture that comes in from your camera. Before you make any changes, best practice is to convert it through file save as into a TIFF file and work on the TIFF. Okay, so hopefully that will help you um, start start to get to grips with a little bit to do with Photoshop. 
thanks for, for watching.